Welcome everybody to the lesson where we discuss abnormal thyroid function tests. Specifically, we're going to focus on patients that are more than a year old and have a borderline TSH. This lesson here is not applicable to neonates or infants and is not applicable to anybody who has fluid hypothyroidism. So the two things we're going to talk about before we go into what to do with the abnormal thyroid function test. Number one is who you are testing. And number two is what is a TSH of a borderline value. So when you talk about who you're testing, you have to think of the reason why you did the exam for the patient. So you have to be able to finish the sentence, your patient needs thyroid function tests because blank. If it's someone that has cold intolerance, feeling tired, gaining weight, constipation, all those typical symptoms, then it's okay to do the thyroid function tests. The other thing that you have to consider is, does my patient have A, obesity, and B, Down syndrome? Obesity and Down syndrome are two common causes where we get borderline thyroid function tests with respect to TSH without an actual organic disease being present. So now let's define what is borderline TSH. Borderline TSH is usually two times the upper limit of what the assay says is normal. Most assays will have an upper limit of normal of 5, so TSH between 5 and 10 is borderline TSH. Let me make a point here. If the TSH is more than 10 in your patient, you should refer them to the endocrinology clinic. So let's change gears, scroll down here, and talk about what we'll do when we get these results. The first thing that you, we ought to do when we get results like that is to repeat those thyroid function tests in about two to four weeks. The timing here is important, and to illustrate that, I'm gonna have a graph of TSH levels and time, but in days, not hours, but days. And my dashed line here in the middle is the average TSH that any patient will have over a period of a month. He or she is gonna go over and under the average many times in a month, but when you check, you don't know if point A is when you checked or if it's actually point B, the nadir. So the thing that's gonna make this valuable is to see the trend. The trend is your friend. That's my little catchphrase for this lesson. So you have to check TFTs at A, you find them borderline high, but then you have to see what the trend is. If the next value is B, then you're okay. But if it's my B prime here, then that patient probably has an organic disease. Together with a second blood test two to four weeks later, you should investigate acquired hypothyroidism. The most common cause of acquired hypothyroidism in the pediatric age group is Hashimoto's. And most of these patients, not all, but most of these patients will have antibodies. So you need to get antithyroglobulin antibody and antithyroperoxidase antibody. It's going to go a long ways into help you diagnose if there's an actual organic disease present. So let's talk about these results that you're going to get back. We're going to make a flow diagram with our results. And we started with repeating the TSH first. That's gonna come back one of two ways. Either it's gonna be back normal, or it's gonna still be twice the upper limit of normal, so still borderline high. Let me make a little parenthesis here, very important parenthesis. This is for patients that throughout the whole investigation period have had normal T4, normal thyroid hormone levels. We're not talking about anybody who has low levels of thyroid hormone here. So on both occasions, together with your TSH, we repeated antibodies. And to the left here, we have normal TSH and let's say negative antibodies. You're in the clear, false alarm, you can stop and reassure the patient. If however your TSH was normal and your antibody screen came back positive, that is diagnostic of a euthyroid Hashimoto's disease. These patients might not need to be placed on treatment now, but they do need to be followed twice a year with TFTs for the rest of the growth, and then after that annually for the rest of their life. So they probably need referral to the endocrinology clinic. If your TSH is still high, quote unquote high, and you get positive antibodies, then this is compensated hypothyroidism. The thyroid hormone level is still okay, but the TSH is creeping up the body's thyroid hormone production is going to soon fail, these patients need to be referred to endocrinology for them to be placed on treatment with levothyroxine. The toughest category to deal with is the patients that still have the TSH 
borderline high value, but I have negative antibody screen. So then you have to think of why am I testing this patient? You have to look at the clinical picture. Is it someone that has symptoms? Is it someone that has a big goiter? Am I really worried about this patient? And then number two, look at the family history of autoimmunity. So then combining your clinical suspicion with a review of history, you will be able to say if that is a type of patient that has Hashimoto's disease that is also antibody negative. That is a type of patient that might need to be monitored with thyroid function tests every six months, anticipating that at some point they might start having low thyroid hormone level. However, many of these patients do not have Hashimoto's disease and they have slightly higher TSH values because of the way their anterior pituitary is wired up to be. So you can see here from our flow chart, the two instances where you would refer someone to the endocrinology clinic straight away with your repeat labs is the instances where your antibodies are positive. A borderline high TSH by itself doesn't necessarily equal referral. So let's zoom out and quickly summarize on what we learned today. We said that when we're doing TFTs in a patient, we have to think of who am I testing? You have to be able to have a good reason for getting TFTs. We also said that obesity and trisomy 21 are two instances where TSH can be a little bit on the high side, sometimes five, six, or seven in the lab value. And we said that borderline TSH is defined as the upper limit of normal, which is five, all the way to twice that, which is about 10. The first thing to do is repeat the thyroid function tests in about two to four weeks, and the trend will tell you which way you're going. Together with the same blood test, get antithyroid globally and antithyroid peroxidase antibodies. From your results, if you have normal TSH and negative antibody screen, then you can stop investigations. However, if your antibodies are positive, these patients have to be referred to the endocrine clinic. If your TSH is still high and you get antibodies present, then you definitely have to refer to the endocrine clinic to initiate treatment for Hashimoto's disease. However, if your TSH is still high and your antibodies are negative, you might be dealing with an antibody negative Hashimoto, so you have to see what the clinical picture is, what the family history is, and depending on the degree of suspicion, these patients might have to have TFTs repeated every six months or so. But the key to know who to refer immediately to the endocrine clinic is just to know if the Hashimoto's antibodies are positive. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you check out the other endocrine videos online.